Now over some health news. You know the old expression, don't worry, be happy. 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 Don't worry. Ashley Banfield from a parking lot in Phoenix, reporting via satellite with Nancy Grace, who seemed to be in the same parking lot in Phoenix. I'm basing that, of course, on the fact that the cars that are passing by Ashley Banfield's location box also appear to be passing directly into Nancy Grace's box. In consumer news, economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. Economic factors may take some spring out of the Easter Bunny step this year. After faking a news conference, instead of facing the usual grilling from journalists, the emergency management agency had its own employees, you see them sitting down right there, pretend to be reporters and ask the questions. Well, now the White House is responding. It is not um, a, a practice that we would employ here at the White House, or that we, we certainly don't condone it. We didn't know about it beforehand. Uh, FEMA has issued an apology um, and an, saying that they had an error in judgment when they were attempting to try to get out a lot of information to um, reporters who were asking for inf answers to a variety of questions in regards to the wildfires in California. It's not something I would have condoned, and uh, they, I'm sure, will not do it again. Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of email overload? Could this be the end of email overload? But could this be the end of e We're going now to Saudi Arabia and Charles Jaco. Charles, are you still hearing me? Charles yes, Jaco is uh, just the air raid sirens are just now going off here near these U.S. bases in Saudi Arabia. We've sent the entire camera crews inside right now. We're all preparing to put on our gas masks, as we've been told. There are sounds of planes overhead. We don't know whose planes there are, but air raid sirens are going off insistently. There are military convoys on both sides of me. We're being told to get off this platform and get inside into the air raid shelter immediately. But right now, everyone's been training for this, and uh, it looks like we may have to... All right, Charles Jaco, that doesn't mean that he is in any imminent danger. Of course, we can't know that. CD, if you need to take cover, I notice uh, that you've got your gas mask in your hands. If you need we, to put it on, we, we please have, do so if you need to take cover. People are looking up in the sky, scanning the skies to see what they can see. Hi, Atlanta. We're about to have a short course in missile identification. This is a scud. You can tell it by its distinctive label. Now, when the missile is launched, the first thing you look for is the plume sticking out behind it. Now, when you detect this, you can tell it's been launched. Thank you. See you. The graffiti on it? Yeah, show me graffiti. <laughs> Larry King show or bust. Je suis un journaliste américain. <laughs> Wolf. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Oh, I love this country so much. You guys just don't have a clue. Well, Cheryl, it was almost exactly two hours ago when the sirens went off here in Saudi Arabia. Where we are in eastern Saudi Arabia, there was no problem. Now, let me just size my mask and fit it for a second, just like I always do. Stand by. All clear. They're... Oh, what are they saying? Are they saying all clear? Yes, ma'am. Were they saying all clear down there just now? All clear, all clear, at the end was a false alarm. Got that, Atlanta? Standing down now, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go get my hamburger and my coffee. Good, uh, we just got the all clear. Now. All clear. Every time I order something, this happens. All clear, thank you. Do you have any people paid by the CIA who are working for television networks? 
This, I think, gets into the kind of uh, getting into the details, Mr. Chairman, that I'd like to get into in executive session. U.S. President George Herbert Walker Bush pushes for a land war against Iraq. But polls show the U.S. public is split 50-50 on that idea. Then comes this eyewitness testimony before a congressional committee from a 15-year-old Kuwaiti girl. The claim is she cannot be identified for fear of reprisals. While I was there, I saw the Iraqi soldiers come into the hospital with guns. They took the babies out of the incubators. took the incubators and left the children to die on the cold floor. The U.S. public is outraged. The result? Support for land war zooms. It's a turning point. Desert Storm is launched. 135,000 Iraqis are killed. An estimated one million Iraqis, many of them children and old people, then die as a result of 10 years of sanctions. One small problem. There never were any incubator baby deaths, not one. The Canadian Broadcasting Corporation's investigative flagship program, The Fifth Estate, reveals the girl to be the Kuwaiti ambassador's daughter, given her lines and coached in acting by the giant American PR firm Hill & Knowlton. It's one phase in a $10 million joint U.S.-Kuwaiti campaign of deception. This man is lying. I myself buried 14 newborn babies that had been taken from their incubators. This man is lying. And they had kids in incubators and they were thrown out of the incubators so that Kuwait could be systematically dismantled. There were a lot of people who participated in a conspiracy. Yes, an out-and-out -out conspiracy of fake organizations, false documents, fraud and disinformation. Do you have any people being paid by the CIA who are contributing to the national news services, AP and UPI? Well, again, I think we're getting into the kind of detail, Mr. Chairman, that I'd prefer to handle in executive session. I'm Ray McGovern, a 27-year veteran of the Central Intelligence Agency. Why did you lie to get us into a war that was not necessary and that has caused these kinds of casualties? Rut row. First of all, I, I haven't lied. Oh, he didn't lie. All right, well, that settles it, everybody. There's pound cake in the back. We can all have a nice time. And uh, It appears that there were not weapons of mass destruction there. You said you knew where they were. I did not. See? <laughs> he never said he knew where they were. We know where they are. They're in the area around uh, Tikrit and Baghdad and, and uh, east, west, south, and north so, somewhat. So the Secretary of Defense caught in a contradiction about weapons of mass destruction. Surely that will be a big story. How much of an axe do you have to grind with Secretary Rumsfeld? But he wasn't just any heckler. Were you nervous? Tucker, I resent the word heckler. I'd like you to take that back. Okay, I'm not taking it back. Donald yes. Rumsfeld encouraged whoever, I think, had their hands on you at the time to let you stay there. Does he get any credit for that today? Isn't it enough that he was wrong and had bad judgment? Why does he have to be a liar, too? Well, you know, that's the question you'd have to direct to him. But won't. Right after 9-11, people were asked about Iraq, and only about 16% felt Saddam Hussein had anything to do with it. But with all of this propaganda coming out, Cheney and all those folks, about 28% believed that Iraq had something to do with it. Two years after we invaded Iraq, close to 60%, 56% of Americans believed a delusion. What did Iraq have to do with what? The attack on the World Trade Center. Nothing. There are five giant multinational corporations who control all 14,000, virtually all 14,000 radio stations in America, all 5,000 television stations, 80% of our newspapers, all of our billboards, and most of the large internet content providers. So there are five guys who are deciding what we hear as news and information.
Iraq's, Iraq's continued, continued defiance, defiance of the community of, the community of nations presents of a nations challenge which must be addressed. Presents a challenge which the must be addressed. The member for Grindler. It is inherently, it is inherently dangerous, dangerous to allow Speaker, a country such as Iraq to allow a country such as Iraq to retain weapons, to retain weapons of mass, mass destruction, destruction particularly, particularly in the light of its past aggressive, its past aggressive behaviour. That's right. If the world, if the community, world fails community fails to disarm Iraq, fails to disarm we fear that other rogue states we will be encouraged to believe that, other that they too states will can be have these weapons to lead. Uh, Whitney Houston died in a swimming pool. She had more than twice as much coverage on primetime TV than 250,000 people who died in Haiti. Lance Armstrong was involved in a doping scandal. Oh, my God. F almost three times more attention than we gave to the death of a quarter of a million people in Haiti. So, three years after the Haiti quake, there are 378,000 Haitians who are still living in tents. Our uh, uh, Wolf Blitzer is not covering that story, okay? He's busy trying to entertain us. So now with Pelletti dropping out, Rick Perry dropping in, and Michelle Bachman and Ron Paul dominating the Ames straw poll, we got ourselves a race. We have a top tier. It is Mitt Romney, Rick Perry, and Michelle Bachman. We have a new top tier, and it's Perry... Mitt Romney and Bachman. There's now a top tier in this race, at least for now, of Romney, Perry, and Bachman. I mean, I think that's fair to say. Really fair to say? You're not forgetting, I don't know, anyone, say, an ideologically consistent 12-term congressman who came within less than 200 votes of winning the straw poll? Isn't anyone going to give that gentleman a little love? There's a top tier now of, of, of Bachman and Perry and Romney, and, you know, we haven't mentioned, and we should, Thank you. We haven't mentioned, and we should, Rick Santorum, who did really surprisingly well for the amount of money and resources he had. Rick Santorum? He didn't get half of what Ron Paul got. He lost to the guy who lost so bad he dropped out of the race. Santorum? We're looking at Mitt Romney, who continues to be the front runner, but we have Rick Perry as well, and now Michelle Bachman. Let's not count out John Huntsman, though. What? John Huntsman? Huntsman got 69 votes. If, if all of John Huntsman's supporters met at the same Ames, Iowa Quiznos, the fire marshal would say, yeah, that's fine, no problem. There's still some tables open in the back. Huntsman, Huntsman was the only Mormon running in the straw poll, and he came in second amongst Mormons. <laughs> and by the way, this pretending Ron Paul doesn't exist for some reason has been going on for weeks. A new Gallup survey showing Rick Perry running second to Mitt Romney, knocking down Iowa favorite Michelle Bachman to fourth. Ron Paul become the 13th floor in a hotel. <laughs> Why? What's wrong with he is Tea Party patient zero. All that small government grassroots business, he planted that grass. These other folks, they're just moral majorities in a tri-cornered hat. Ron Paul's the real deal, and Fox News should love this guy. But watch the disconnect between the debate moderators at Fox's Thursday debate and the debate audience. Iran does not have an air force that can come here, just like we did in Iraq, build up the war propaganda. There was no al-Qaeda in Iraq, and they had nuclear weapons, and we had to go in. I'm sure you supported that war as well. Okay. It's time we quit this. It's time. It's trillions of dollars we're spending on these wars. <laughs> What's with the smirk and the eye roll? The, guy gives it, the crowd goes nuts, and you do one of these. <laughs> there goes crazy Uncle Ron, <laughs> babbling about the unsustainability of multiple wars. <laughs> He's the one guy in the field, agree with him or don't dis uh, agree with him, who doesn't go out of his way to regurgitate talking points or change what he believes to fit the audience he's in front of. And you're treating him like if this were Celebrity Apprentice, he'd be this guy. <laughs> By the way. At the Ames Iowa straw poll, Busey beat Huntsman 77 to 69. And even when the media 
Syria does remember Ron Paul. It's only to reassure themselves how there's no need to remember Ron Paul. Right now, live, right next to the bus behind us, Ron Paul is speaking. And seven of the candidates are here today. We have live pictures of Ron Paul, but you know what? We're talking about Sarah Palin. We're talking about Rick Perry, the two people not in the race yet, Drew. And guess what, Paul? If you get video of Sarah Palin or get a soundbite from her, bring that back to us. You can hold the Ron Paul stuff. <laughs> Your administration continues to make the use of video news releases, which are prepackaged news stories sent to television stations, fully aware that some or many of these stations will air them without any disclaimer that they are produced by the government. Controller General of the United States this week said that raises ethical questions. Does it raise ethical questions about the use of government money to produce stories about the government that wind up being aired with no disclosure that they were produced by the government? Uh. There, there is a Justice Department opinion that says these, um, these pieces are within the law so long as they're based upon facts, not advocacy. Jane, what more can you tell us about the Salomon Brothers building and its collapse? Well, only really what you already know. Details are very, very sketchy. As you can see behind me, the uh, Trade Center appears to be still burning. We see these huge clouds of smoke and ash. And we know that behind that, there's an empty piece of what was a very familiar New York skyline. 1,500 people are being treated. The collapse of World Trade Center 7 on 9-11 was a rare event. Our study has identified thermal expansion as a new phenomenon that can cause the collapse of a structure. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. I scream, you scream, you know the rest. We received an order from one of Murdoch's uh, apparatchiks, if you will, that we should cut away from our newscast and start carrying a fawning tribute to Ronald Reagan that was airing at the Republican convention. Uh, we were stunned uh, because up until that point, we were allowed to do legitimate news. And suddenly we were ordered from the top to carry propaganda, carry Republican right-wing propaganda. The U.S. State Department calls him one of the most significant financial sponsors of Islamic extremism in the world. Supposedly, a CNN reporter found Osama bin Laden, took a television camera crew with him. Uh, he is a major terrorist financier went in to Osama bin Laden's hideout. We are put in a minivan with curtained windows and drive west. As night falls, we move to a four-wheel drive vehicle that makes its way up a rough mountain path past checkpoints manned by heavily armed men. Interviewed him and his top leadership, his top lieutenants and colonels and generals in their hideout. Mr. Bin Laden, you have declared a jihad against the United States. Can you tell us why? The U.S. government has committed acts that are extremely unjust, hideous, and criminal through its support of the Israeli occupation of Palestine. And we believe the U.S. is directly responsible for those killed in Palestine, Lebanon, and Iraq. This is a CNN reporter with a camera crew. And he came out and told everybody, within three weeks, Osama bin Laden is going to attack the United States and Israel. Now, don't you think that's kind of strange, folks? You see, because the largest intelligence apparatus in the world, with the biggest budget in the history of the world, has been looking for Osama bin Laden for years and years and years, and can't find him. Some doofus, jerk-off reporter with a camera crew, waltzes right into his hideout and interviews him. Now, that tells us two things. Either everyone in the intelligence community and all of the intelligence agencies of the United States government are blithering idiots and incompetent fools, including the entire apparatus of the FBI and all of their personnel, or they're lying to us. They're not looking for him at all.
I suspect your research has discovered the memoranda that were written by John Moody and by Roger uh, in terms of setting the tone for the day. Uh, the message of the day is a very political uh, device. Let's spend a good deal of time on the battle over judicial nominations, which the president will address this morning. Nominees who both sides admit are qualified are being held up because of their possible, not demonstrated, views on one issue, abortion. This should be a trademark issue for FNC today and in the days to come. There was nothing covert about the way uh, the managing editors in New York or Washington operated. They made it perfectly clear what they expected from us. The so-called 9-11 Commission has already been meeting. This is not what did he know and when did he know it stuff. Do not turn this into Watergate. Every morning there was a detailed uh, list of subjects to talk about, not talk about. Kerry's speech on the economy at Georgetown is likely to move on to the topic of Iraq. We should take the beginning of the Kerry speech and see if other news at the time is more compelling. It is not required to take it start to finish. They were just actually issuing edicts to the reporters to control what they could say and how they could say it. Let's refer to the U.S. Marines we see in the foreground as sharpshooters, not snipers, which carries a negative connotation. When headquarters sent a memo every morning and said, we want to touch on the following issues, we want to cover the following stories, we want to do them in this particular way, our job and our objective then was to execute the plan. The pictures from Abu Ghraib prison are disturbing. Today we have a picture, aired on Al Arabiya, of an American hostage being held with a scarf over his eyes, clearly against his will. Who's outraged on his behalf? So here's just a segment of stuff that will never appear on American television. So there are a hundred thousand stories like that that simply do not get uh, into our consciousness. And so we remain uh, kind of immune from having to deal with uh, the consequences of our collective behavior. The documentary that we just saw a clip of never aired. It never aired on CNN International. Why not? Well, I, I still haven't been given uh, an exact reason as to why not why it didn't air. I went and visited with the president of CNN International, Tony Maddox, twice uh, on behalf of my dumbfounded crew, and uh, and we were never given uh, a, an answer. And so I started uh, investigating the situation, Liz, after several employees who'd been at the network for years approached me and said, you need to look into this. There's something going on. It's very strange they're not airing your documentary. And after some investigation, we found out that CNN International is actually Actually, making money from the Bahrain regime. They, they are a, a customer of Bahrain. Bahrain is paying CNN International to create content that shows Bahrain in a favorable light uh, and, and then air also not only to create that content, Liz, to then air that content on CNN International. Uh, and in one of the shows, it was called I List Bahrain. It was back in uh, 2010. It was sponsored by Bahrain. And, and Richard Quest was live from the country for a week talking about the Formula One race and how progressive Bahrain wa was and how the crown prince was a reformer. Well, we, we saw in February 2011 that under 
under the uh, Crown Prince's rule, the, the military troops shot and killed unarmed protesters in, in broad daylight. And, and this is very dangerous because what CNN is doing, and they're not only taking money from just Bahrain, they've also uh, produced similar content for Georgia, Kazakhstan, and other nations as well, Lebanon. And, and, and what makes this dangerous is they're not disclosing to the viewers that these sponsored programs are actually being sponsored. Or if they are disclosing it, it's in very small gray lettering at the bottom of the article. Whether it's CNN or CBS or NBC, it's all fiction. The people making the junk know that. The viewers suspect it, but where are they going to turn to?